in this video, I'm going to show you how we created this nerf of this crash ship using drone footage. And then also I'm going to show you how to create a custom fly through video render of that nerf. So first, let me go ahead and just show you the nerf. Now, this side, you know, you can kind of tell it gets a little warpy right here. It seems to kind of change the location of the ship. But once you come around to this side, whenever you have the sun actually hitting in from the backside, it looks really good. And we're just talking about the structure, of course. When you're looking at the water around the area, it does not look good. You kind of see like this is kind of raised up right here on the side. But the structure of the ship itself, like on this back side, it looks pretty good. And then also you have like this broken down dock. So that kind of stayed intact. The scene back here was good. And all of this was, of course, not with the intention to create a nerf. This was actually just test footage to see how this would work out. Uh, there's not really a big use in this nerf, I don't think, unless you're like creating something about like crash ships and stuff. But of course, it would need to be recaptured so that we don't have so much stuff going around the edges around here. So let me go ahead and just show you the original footage. This was submitted to us by a drone pilot by the name of Rob Lehman. He is a drone pilot in our network. And he did a single orbit around this ship. Now, ideally, if you're going to be capturing this for nerf processing, you might want to drop down a little bit more so you still get more of the horizon. Uh, you don't want to just be looking at your subject. You want to see the scenery in the background. That's probably why the waves like on this top part right up here kind of warped in and kind of looked like it was like taller than the ship right there. But on this backside right here, we have that soft lighting at golden hour, which is perfect for creating nerfs. So you have some soft shadows and it looks really good. That's why this side, you know, processed and rendered out really good. We got these structures like right down here in the nerf. And for the most part, it's really good. It looks a little bit jacky in this video, but that's just because my computer is trying to like screen record while playing this back. But for the most part, you can see this nerf uh, was created from just a single orbit, you know? And you can do this with POI mode, but keep in mind that you want some more scenery. So you want to drop it down to where your gimbal is as close as zero, uh, zero degree tilt. If, you know, you can go down to like five or 10 degrees and that's great. But I had to chop off, I think it was about right here. So like 133, like these like last like three or four seconds, kind of like, okay, you know, I guess it was like the last like two seconds kind of just like shifted. So it wasn't really like an orbit keeping focus. So you, you chop that off on the end and then you also chop off the beginning right here. This is just standstill. Then the orbit starts and then it starts to get into like the clean flow. So I think I chopped off like the first like seven or eight seconds of that. But Again, if this was ideal for like a project and stuff, this wouldn't really be the most ideal footage, but it's enough to get you a nerf. And with that, you then throw that into Luma AI. You can render it out in this way, you know, the playback. This is like the default orbit that Luma creates with the nerf, but you can see right here, like this side kind of messed up. And this is when this, the structure of it starts to look good. The cool thing about this is that you can then take it from this little share embed link up here. You can embed any of these types of renders. So if you wanna embed the video render that you have right here, this like default orbit, then you can embed that into your website. You can also have the interactive panorama that I showed in the beginning, where you can kind of control the slider left and right. I think that feature is really cool uh, that shows a little bit more inter interaction that the end user gets. So if you have this up on your website and you want to show a client like a 3D model or something and kind of give them some of that control to move around it. Nope, it's kind of glitching right there. But um, that interactive panorama feature is nice. Now we have the interactive 3D nerf, but you're probably not going to want to embed this on your site because it has like a lot of like frosting, it looks like. Similar to how like photogrammetry has frosting for like facades and stuff. This just, I guess it's just noisy, really. I mean, you can tell, like, you can kind of tell what's going on here, but you wouldn't really want to embed that, like, onto your website. 
So I like to embed the video renders because they are 1080p. But a cool thing is whenever you have a custom render. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into my iPhone because I like to do the custom fly through renders through there. And then I'll show you what that looks like in the Luma mobile app. So once you're in the Luma app, you're going to click on reshoot and that's going to open up your viewer. So that way you kind of have like this 3D video viewer. So a cool thing that I like to do is edit with the 3D model sometimes, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on the scene. So that way you can kind of tell what's going on around the 3D model. Now you start with basically just key framing in the areas that you want to be at. So it's very similar to you know key framing with After Effects and moving around 3D graphics. But imagine you have this custom camera that you're dropping into this nerf scene and you're able to move around it in 3D space and capture all the different perspectives that you have. So ideally in a scenario where you go, you capture a site and you know you only have two or three orbits of the site, maybe you miss an angle that you kind of want to go back and get, you can use this nerf to be able to go back and fly through that scene and export this video render in a 4K file. So that way you have something at least comparable to throw into your whole sequence. So right now you see me just basically moving back and forth, kind of trying to figure out where I want my focus to be at. And I'm focusing on the side that looks the best from the nerf. So remember this backside that had that golden hour light on it, that looked the best. Right here, you can change your aspect rate ratio and just click playback. Now the sequence moves in 12 seconds. That's the time length that I have for it. And I feel like it kind of moves a little bit too fast. So let me go ahead and remove one of these keyframes because also it kind of just like jumped up weird right there. Then you stretch that out and you can stretch out your timing. So from 12 seconds to 22 seconds, it slows up my whole video. And now this looks a lot more aesthetic. I can post this and you know feel comfortable that nobody's gonna get dizzy from looking back at this video. Right here, I just export it out and it saves in my renders tab. And there you go. That's how you create a custom fly through around your nerf. And again, this project was not with the intention to create a nerf. It was more so a test to see how it reacts with that moving water. And as you can tell, it does a lot better than photogrammetry with creating a 3D scene. Now, this is not to replace photogrammetry by any means because you're not using it for accuracy. Even though you do get a mesh whenever you run your fo footage through Luma AI, you can use that for collision and Unreal Engine 5, but it's not gonna be an accurate mesh like you would get from photogrammetry. It just happens to be a different tool for a different job.